welcome to the lecture on generation of random numbers. So, we have studied a uh, few things about the course and we have seen that being the simulation of stochastic in nature in case of the discrete event simulation, every time you will be required to deal with the random numbers. Now, what are the random numbers? As the name indicates, they are random. We do not know out of the possible outcomes what will be coming. So, there must be you know proper way of generating the random, random numbers which should serve the purpose the way it has been to be used. So, there are different types of random number generators and there is requirement for these random numbers like what it should be or how it should be. Like uh, the most requirement for these is uh, about its uniformity and independence. No, now, we will go into little bit in the, into the history of the generation of the random numbers. Now, first of all let us see that as we discussed that every stochastic simulation requires generation of identical and independent you know uh, distributed independent and identically distributed random numbers. So, you normally generate the random numbers or random variates between 0 to 1 that is u, u means it is uniformly distributed. So, as we know for uniform distribution the density function is shown like this that if f x I mean f x will be 1 if the value lie between 0 to 1 and if the value lie between you know either below you know 0 or more than 1 then the probability is 0. So, that is what the you know probability distribution function for uniform distribution is. So, whenever we generate the random numbers we have to be sure that we you know generate the random numbers of uniform distribution. So, normally the generators generate the random numbers of uniform you know distribution normally typically you can generate in excel you can have the programs. So, and even typically when we talk about the random numbers like we uh, toss a die you know dice or you take a card from the playing card bunch all these are the random numbers out of suppose you out of 52 cards you take one card. So, certainly the probability is 1 by 52. So, for every card, but certainly that probability will be you know uh, 0 if it is outside these 52 cards. So, let us go into the early methods how earlier the random numbers were generated. So, among the physical methods you have casting lots, you have throwing dice, you dice the I mean throw the dice you get the numbers at random that was one of the uh, method you have the lot in that you have to take one that is among the random number generation. Then you have dealing out with the cards, you have the pack of cards, you take one of the card that is also a random. So, you know that is an example of taking a random card. So, then again you have drawing numbered balls from well stirred urn. So, many a times uh, this practice is also used you have the urn which is well stirred and then you are taking one of the car I mean ball with certain numbers. So, that is again again a type of taking one random number. So, apart from that the lotteries in earlier days or even today they use these random numbers. So, there also you pick any number and the chances you know you I mean you do not know. So, that is the way you know you generate random numbers. There are even mechanical means like use of spinning disc. So, that was basically suggested by Kendall and Babington Smith. So, uh, in that basically they prepared a table of 1 lakh random digits. So, that was a mechanical means to produce the random numbers. Uh, random number has already also been produced using the electrical principles. So, using electrical circuits 
uh, on randomly pulsating vacuum tubes also these random numbers are generated. So, that is Ernie it was used by the British you know general post office to pick winners in the premium savings bond lottery. So, this way uh, you know random numbers are generated. Now, there is another example like picking, picking the random numbers out of the phone books. So, that is also an example of taking random number. Similarly, you take the expansion of pi and you go to 1000 digits and take any number. So, taking digits in that. So, these are all the examples of random numbers. So, there is randomness we do not know uh, what will be the outcome. So, now although we generate these random numbers, but there are certainly challenges in these generation of random numbers that too in this era in the modern era where we require large number of random numbers and also we need accurate random numbers. We need these random numbers to solve problems of different kinds. So, what are the challenges in generation of these random numbers? Now, the thing is first is that many of the methods cannot reproduce the previously generated random streams exactly. So, all these methods which we have discussed in most of them you the reproducibility is not there. If you have to produce these random numbers again that is not possible. So, that reproducibility is lacking. Similarly, uh, in earlier days you required the random number in small quantities. Now, in present day because of complex systems because of the study of those systems you require very very large number of you know computer I mean uh, random numbers. For that if you are generating even through arithmetic means or computer means you require a very powerful you know computer otherwise it will take a lot of time this large amount of memory requirement. So, earlier you had the restriction now that is why you have different type of algorithms to generate these random numbers. So, as we discussed that you have the insufficient numbers at present you know as per the present day requirement you have the insufficient numbers of random numbers being generated. So, there has been even in the past you know in 1945 this uh, arithmetic methods were used and it was one of the method which was used by von Neumann and Metropolis. So, that they have categorized as mid square method. So, it is the sequential uh, in the sequential way it generates the random number you know uh, by using a fixed mathematical formula. So, in the mid square method what they do is uh, they take a four digit numbers the seed value that is z naught or z 0 and this four digit number is squared you know and then the square number will have eight digits. So, this out of these eight digits you take the four digits. So, this four digit will be z 1 for the next okay. and then in that case you know from z 1 you go again to z 1 square and then the next four digit I mean middle four digit is taken and then that is further squared. So, this way the you are getting the different random numbers. So, as it is shown that you have z naught or z 0 that is four digit integer you have z 1 as middle of the four digits of z naught square and then you have because z naught square will be of 8 digits. So, u 1 will be z 1 that is with decimal point at the left. So, you get the random number in between these uh, you know I mean the middle 4 digits. So, this way you get u 1, u 2, u 3 and so. So, random variates you can get. For example, if we try to see for no, I mean for 2 digits suppose you do for 4 digit. So, suppose you are starting with 73. So, 73 will be 5329. So, 5329 will be suppose 4 digit number it is coming. So, you take so using 4 2 digit number 
so it will be 32 so 32 will be square so 32 square 73 square so 32 square will be 10 to 4 so it will be 2 so 2 square will be again 0 4 so that way it will it is basically vanishing but if you take another number or if you take the four digit number in that case suppose 5871 so 5871 will be squared and you will get a number here of eight digits so your this four digit will be taken and suppose you get this digit as a b c d e f g h so this number c d e f will come here so this c d f again is will be squared so you will get something like i j k l m n o p these are the digits from 0 to 9 all these are from 0 to 9 so again you will take this so this will come as k l m n so this way your these numbers will be and this you put so you put a decimal you know at the beginning so that will be a random number between uh, 0 and 1 so this way these uh, arithmetic methods like mid square method is you know working and you get the random numbers so this is based on the arithmetic generator now the thing is that you have certain challenges in case of this mid square method. So, basically it is not really random because you know that what will come and the entire sequence will be depending upon z0 that is seed value. So, z0 that is uh, whatever you take that according to that you will have the values coming. So, and further if a z i reappears then sequence will be recycled. So, the thing is that one thing is that you know it so it is not truly random and also that there will be recycling once the similar z i comes in that case it will further be recycling. Now, this objection is applied to most of the arithmetic generators. Okay. So, that is why and we have to use these generators we have the arithmetic means to generate the random numbers. So, that is why whenever we generate the random numbers we basically you know call it as pseudo random numbers because it is not truly random numbers it is that is why it is known as pseudo random numbers. We also see that as we have seen that in this case if the number is chosen like this in that case we see that very early stage it is vanishing. So, you are not getting further random, num random numbers suppose you start with 77. So, you get 5929 and if you do, do that then you have 92 square that is 8464. So, you are getting this 46 square will be 2116 and so 11 square will be 0 1 2 1. So, if again 1 2 square will be 0 1 4 4 like that. So, it will move it will move like that so, again 1 4 square will be 0 1 9 6 again 1 9 square will be 0 3 6 1. So, anyway it is moving, but as we took this number for a 2 digit x naught we saw that very you know early stage we started getting you know 0 0 and we cannot proceed further, but if we if we took the seed value somewhat different in that case what we see is that you get these random numbers at least this cycling the period is increased. Okay. So, it all depends upon the seed value and this is one of the drawback of such generators of suppose mid square method where depending upon the initial seed you know this period is uh, calculated. So, period is very important uh, because uh, you need the different types of random numbers and for that the seed is important. 
So, it depends upon the seed this is also one of the drawbacks. So, you have to very particularly select what is the seed value based on that you can get the different random numbers. So, let us now discuss something about pseudo random numbers. So, as we discussed that because uh, we cannot think of having complete random numbers we do not know we will not be replicate the same thing we will not be able to reproduce the same thing. So, for keeping all these requirements in mind you need the random numbers which you can further replicate which you can further produce with certain algorithm with certain principles. So, that is why they are known as pseudo random numbers. Now, random numbers generated by a computer are not really random they are just like just behave like random numbers that is why they are known as pseudo random numbers. So, but then we have to see that it serves the purpose for which it is generated. Now, for the large sample the generator values will pass through a test for its distribution. So, as we discussed we have to see that the random numbers should be uniformly distributed uniformly distributed it. So, it should follow the uniform distribution that is uh, you know f x equal to x uh, you know I mean f x is 1 for uh, uh, I mean when 0 x is varying between 0 to 1 and then it is 0 when it is outside that range. So, it should be uniformly distributed. So, in the range the equal probability should be there for all the you know uh, random numbers generated and uh, there is uh, another test uh, for so for uh, this test you have the uh, uniform mitty test as well as you have the independence test. So, you have the uniformity test uh, that is uh, also known as frequency test and for for that we take either the Kolgomorov Smirnov test or the chi square test and there is auto correlation test. So, that is done for checking the independence of the random numbers generated. Now, now the considerations which are to be kept in mind are basically uh, you know you have the routine should be fast. So, in the in the last uh, lecture it was basically not the run test run tests are different tests apart I mean that is coming later before that you have the uniformity test as well as the autocorrelation test. Now, let us see that what are the important requirements for the important considerations for such uh, you know routines the routine must be fast your requirement is that the gen random number generation should be at fast rate you require the random numbers quickly because you require it during the simulation. So, you must have the generation at a fast rate. So, otherwise the next simulation will be hampered. So, the routine by which you are making these random numbers it should be fast. The routine should be portable to different computers. One of the other requirement other consideration is that it should be portable to different computers. Then, because it, it, it can be used in other computers or so, it should have a sufficiently long cycle. As we saw that in this case, uh, you know, you will see cycle means uh, you know it changes, it uh, further repeats. So, you must have a long cycle, otherwise, same random number will be used. So, your routine must be such that you have a larger cycle of the random numbers. So, for that anyway seed, seed number seed values and other things are required random numbers should be replicable whenever you are thinking of further finding the random numbers you must be in a position to run the program again and get the random numbers. The generated random numbers should closely approximate the ideal statistical properties of uniformity and independence that is also one of the criteria means the random number which you are generating they should be uniform as well as they should be independent. So, they must be approximately you know uniform as well as independent.
what are the challenges in generating these pseudo random numbers. Now, the thing is that once we generate the random numbers by different techniques, these generated random numbers may not be uniformly distributed. So, this is one of the challenge while generating the pseudo random numbers. Then you may get discrete value instead of continuous value. Many a times your requirement you, you should get some con in continuous range you must get proper, but you are getting the discrete value. So, that is what this point means and uh, that is one of the you know point which should be kept in mind. Many a times when we generate the random numbers we see that mean of the generated numbers either it is too high or too low. So, it means you know I feel from the ideal mean either it is higher or lower side too high or too low. So, that is also not a desirable property. So, this is one of the challenge while generating the random numbers. The variance of the generated numbers that may also be quite high or quite low. So, that should also be in the limit. I mean if these are the cases then we will have to look into that whether we should rely upon these random numbers or not. So, we have to see that the variance of generated numbers I mean it should not be too high or too low and there may be dependence. The thing is that the random numbers when which we produce we may see that there, they, there is dependence auto correlation between numbers like we may see that there is uh, some relationship found between the numbers. We can very much predict that this is number after that this will come after that that will come maybe after 5 numbers this is coming. So, some repetition pattern is observed or we see that after one large there is one small after one large there is one small and this is how much of difference that kind of pattern you may observe. So, these are basically the uh, you know challenges while generating the random numbers. Numbers successively higher or lower than adjacent numbers. The numbers which you are making successively higher or lower than the adjacent numbers. So, as we discussed do you, you have a finite pattern from there you can you know correlate. So, that is how this correlation should not be there. So, that is one of the disadvantages. Several numbers above the mean followed by several numbers below the mean this is also one of the trend which is observed. Many a times you will see that the numbers which you have seen sometimes they are above the mean and sometimes then so many of them come in a group. So, that is above the mean and then further many a times they are coming which are below the mean. So, this way you are seeing that you have uh, you know this is uh, predictable this is correlated. So, all these things should not be there they are basically not fulfilling the condition of independence. So, these are the challenges and these challenges are to be addressed. Now, let us so we have to keep all that in mind and then accordingly you know before that. So, this is are the points which must be thought before that once we generate the random numbers we have to test them. We have to test them and then we have to see that whether they are uniformly distributed and whether they are independent. So, this is to, I mean to be checked techniques of generating pseudo random numbers. So, there are different techniques of generating pseudo random numbers. You have the very famous uh, you know method that is generator known as linear congruential generator. So, you have a linear formula. So, you have some constant a is there x is there a, a is there c and m. So, there is a linear equation based on that since this generator forms the random numbers. So, that is why it is known as linear congruential generators. 
Now, in the linear congruence generator, so as we see that in the linear equation you have some constants. So, by changing these constants you may get the different kind of mixed congruential generator or multiplicative congruential generator. And then you have combined linear congruential generator because many a times you will require to have large number of periods. So, you need to have a composite generator or a combined linear congruential generator where two generators are combined or mixed. So, that you get large number of generators 2 raise to the power 30, 31 or so. Nowadays, even that is less. So, you need very, very large number of generators. So, that is why we go for such generators. Now, let us see what is a linear congruential generator. So, the most common of the methods which is formed is linear congruential generator it generates a sequence of integers z 1, z 2, z 3 in I mean via the recursion formula that is z i equal to a z i minus 1 plus c mod m. So, what you see in the linear congruential generator? So, a equal to I mean z i will be a z i minus 1 plus c mod m. So, as you see in this case a c and m are constant. Okay. So, you require the first number this. So, initially you require a z naught. So, that is known as a seed. So, you you require that seed and you know these constants a c and m. So, and then mod m mod m means once you know a and c and z naught. So, this product this using this expression you find a z i minus 1 plus c and then you divide it using m m is an integer. So, you divide it using m and you get the remainder that remainder is basically the z i value. So, that z i is you are getting. So, once you get the z i this z i z i will vary from 0 to m minus 1 because it is the remainder by dividing with m. So, it will vary between 0 to m minus 1. So, basically you get these random numbers or you can get this random number between 0 to 1 uniformly distributed uh, by dividing it with m modulo it is known as. So, this number you divide so you get so this if you get you will get this value in, in between 0 to 1. So, this way you get these you know number random number between 0 to 1. So, you just see the example. Now, in fact coming to back to this slide if we have c equal to c is not equal to uh, 0 then it is a mixed type of congruential generator. If c is equal to 0 then it is known as multiplicative type of LCG linear congruential generator. Then the just example of this LCG if you look at the example of linear congruential generator uh, what we see here is just see an example where it is shown that you are taking a as 22 m as 63 c as 4 and z naught as 19 19 is the seed value. So, you have 19 as the seed value it is multiplied with a that is 22. So, 19 multiplied by 22 that becomes 418 plus you add in 4 into it. So, 418 plus 4 so that is 422 and 422 will be the z 1 z 1 once you get 422 422 will be divided by m m is 63. So, 422 divided by 
uh, 63. So, that will be basically 63 into 6 378. So, if you divide 422 by 63, so this 422 by 63, this is m. So, it will be 378 that is 6 into 63 plus 44. So, this 44 is coming here, this 44 is the z i, the first random number which you have computed from this linear congruential generator. So, then you have the second generator, second number, sec for second number this 44 will come as the z 1. So, 44 multiplied by you know uh, 44 multiplied by a, a is 22. So, 44 multiplied by 22 it will be 968 and 968 plus 4. So, it will be 972. So, 972 multiplied by 63. So, if we divide 972 divided by 63. So, we see 1 and this is 34 2. So, again 5 15 into 63 plus 27. I hope so. So, it is 27. This 27 has come here. This 27 has come here and this 972 and this 27 divided by 63. So, this here in this case 44 is divided by 63 and in this case 27 is divided by 63. So, you are getting the random number between 0 and 1. So, that is that is how it is going and by looking at this random number what we see is that you see that when we are coming to this number 62 numbers after 62 or 63 you are seeing that it is getting repeated. It is getting repeated so it will come. So, it means that you are your maximum period is m. If you are taking m as 63 your that is your maximum period after 63 you are bound to get repeated. So, once you get because your value is in between that number. So, at any point once this previous number comes you are bound to get repeated. So, once you are getting repeated then the same sequence of numbers will be coming. So, what you see that uh, this this is known as the period. So, this period fortunately is coming here to be quite equal to its m value that is its modulo value, but in many cases they may not be the same they may be lesser than that that is the maximum value. So, cycle length many a times will depend upon basically it may be equal to m or it will be normally less than or equal to m. So, that depends on different parameters. So, we will discuss how these parameters are affecting that in our next lecture. Thank you very much.